In this video, we'll begin looking at time-independent degenerate perturbation theory. And we'll start by providing a motivation for the need for uh, a degenerate perturbation theory. And for that, we're going to begin by considering the spectrum of some model Hamiltonian. So the uh, energy values, uh, energy eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian. And here are four different examples. So at this energy level, uh, you have a non-degenerate state. This is the only state that has this energy. At this level, you have three degenerate states. So three states that have the same energy, non-degenerate state, and a set of four degenerate states at this energy. The uh, idea of degenerate perturbation theory is when you uh, introduce a perturbation, which we can modulate by this parameter lambda, which can go from zero to one. So this lets us tune the perturbation. So this goes from zero to one. Then for the non-degenerate case, we found that uh, this can, a perturbation can slightly alter the energy level of a non-degenerate state. And depending on the effect of this perturbation, we had to uh, calculate first order terms. Uh, if the perturbation contributed a lot, then we also had to calculate second order terms and so on in theory. Uh, until we turn on the perturbation completely, we would have to calculate more terms. Uh, when the perturbation is turned off, so lambda is at order zero, then we just get back our original energy spectrum of the model Hamiltonian. So this is one type, one case that we encounter in practice. Another case that we encounter in practice is this uh, degeneracy. And sometimes when we turn on a perturbation, this will immediately lift the degeneracy, meaning that each uh, state will develop its own distinct energy as we turn on the perturbation. And there's a third case where the perturbation doesn't lift the degeneracy at first order, but at second order, it eventually is able to lift the degeneracy of these energy levels. Okay, so to summarize case number one, we have a non-degenerate energy level in case, uh, so for this case, we can apply non-degenerate perturbation theory that we developed in the last module. The second case, you have uh, degenerate energy levels. And for this one, the degeneracy is lifted by the perturbation at first order. And this is the case we're going to be focusing on. Uh, if the, uh, so we're only gonna be looking at the first order energy corrections and we won't develop the theory to calculate the first order correction to the state or the second correction, uh, second order correction to the energy uh, because that's more complicated. The third case is degenerate energy levels but the degeneracy is not lifted at first order by the perturbation. Okay, and this one we won't treat at all. This is beyond the scope of this course. Uh, you have to be a bit more careful in, in dealing with this particular issue. And in both of these cases, you need to develop uh, degenerate 
perturbation theory to be able to calculate the corrections to the states as a result of this perturbation. And the main motivation for that, for having to develop a, a new theory is that in non-degenerate perturbation theory, we found that the first order correction to the state, which we're denoting by n cat n1. Uh, so this is the unperturbed state, so that correction to the state with energy en0. This was given by the sum over all of the other states times, uh, so you have the matrix element of your perturbation Hamiltonian divided by the energy difference between the state that you're looking at, state n, and every other state in the spectrum. And you're summing over all of the other states. And the reason this fails in the degenerate case is uh, if one of the other states, which we're denoting by K naught, also has the same energy, Okay, so uh, the energy of state K is equal to the energy of the state we're looking at, then the denominator goes to zero and this equation blows up. Okay, so this is if uh, state K and state N are degenerate. So already to first order, we can't trust the theory that we developed for the non-degenerate case. So throughout this module, we'll develop a formalism that's able to deal with degeneracies uh, of type two over here where the degeneracy is lifted at first order. And in the next video, we'll begin to set up uh, the situation and introduce some notation uh, to build on.